Also for Maldive Islanders, a threat to coral and to their coral reefs is a threat to their nation's very existence. A fact amply illustrated when the islanders began mining coral for building materials. The Maldives has the fastest growing economy in Asia and for 20 years this has fueled a building boom. Importing rubble for building is expensive, so the islanders turn to the only local resource they had, coral. Land is at a premium in the Maldives. Even the island's capital city, Male, is only two kilometers across at its widest point. So when building material was needed, the inhabitants dug out the only other place it could be found, the reef. Millions of tons were excavated and crushed for building material. We have very little resource locally available, so the local people uh, have no other option but rather go on coral mining. Because of that, um, the natural protection these corals give to the coastal areas is lost and then there is more wave energy and then as a consequence there is um, erosion which is a huge problem in, in small islands itself. To make matters worse, a land reclamation project on Malay Island filled in the island's inner lagoon right out to the reef's edge. Malay's barrier reefs were gone. In 1987 there was a tidal surge which is related to a storm that generated in, in the Western Australian area. And then the whole reclaimed area was uh, flooded and then many of the areas of the reclaimed uh, or sediments from the reclaimed area was lost. The government has now banned coral mining and been forced to replace the coral reefs with artificial concrete walls, a cost not factored in when the reefs were originally destroyed for the construction. The concrete wall was built around Male, which uh, indirectly uh, sort of costs per linear meet meter, it costs over $10,000. So the total project costs about $14 million for the Male Coastal Protection Works. In Dubai, in the Gulf, one of the world's most ambitious coastal developments is underway. The coastline is being remodelled with more than 185 square kilometres of new seafront property created. Reclaimed for luxury living, it's projected to be worth more than $30 billion. It's meant to be part and parcel of a plan to create a post-oil vision of prosperous living in the Gulf. In the process, nature will be remodelled. To protect this massive development from seasonal storms, construction companies have used 32 million tonnes of natural rock to build an artificial reef 13 kilometres long. It's not the cheapest solution, but for the developers, it's nothing more than good business sense. It'll give us recreation opportunities, commercial opportunities, people for scuba diving. It'll also give us opportunities to have stable breakwaters and it starts giving us a community. So it, it's, it's a win-win-win when you look in a long-term vision of 20 years. With all the billions of dollars to be made from reefs, having to wait for them to grow at their own pace costs money. In the Maldives, they've experimented with installing an electric reef. There is some debate over how well this technology works, but it's claimed the electric current stimulates faster reef building by the corals. We build a structure out of metal and we attach a very small electrical current, uh, not enough to electrocute anything, it's about three volts of negative DC current. And because calcium ions are positively charged, the calcium is attracted to the, the electrified metal. So this is after about five years of growth and as you can see there's no rust, the, the metal isn't degrading and breaking down in nature, in fact, is growing a living reef to get stronger and stronger with time. But it's not just the wealthy property developer or the big tourist companies who derive income and protection from reefs. In developing countries, coral reefs contribute about one quarter of the total fish catch, providing food to an estimated one billion people in Asia alone. Not bad for an ecosystem that takes up just 1% of the Earth's surface. And with two-thirds of the world's coral reefs found in developing countries, 
They play a vital role in the livelihoods of many of the world's most vulnerable people. Globally, half a billion people are estimated to live within 100 kilometers of a coral reef and benefit from its production and protection. But it's an irony that while some countries are seeing the direct returns in conserving their polyps, a larger force may be undermining their new measures, climate change. As the Earth warms through climate change, sea ice and glaciers at the Earth's poles are melting, contributing to a rise in sea levels. Scientists with the International Panel on Climate Change estimate that sometime in the next century, sea levels could rise by up to a metre above present levels. Here in the Maldives, we don't have any factories or uh, mass pollution. Uh, I would say we are being punished for a crime that we did not commit. The Maldives is the lowest lying country in the world, with nowhere more than a metre above sea level. They now find themselves on the front line, quite literally, of a rising tide. And since Maldives is a very low-lying nation, and we may be the very first uh, country that may be affected by sea level rise, for us, even one degree rise in the sea temperature is fatal. Rising temperatures are affecting more than sea levels. In 1998, a rise in sea temperature during an El Nino event killed off between 70 and 90 percent of all the corals found in the Maldives. As they die, the corals expel the symbiotic algae that give them their distinctive colors, a phenomenon known as coral bleaching. There was nothing here, even in Banyan tree here, there was hardly any live piece of coral here. As a result of that, the tourism went down. Very few people came here. I would say about uh, between 50 to 70 percent of our income went down. This was the result of the uh, coral reef dying. The really bad news for the planet is that a warming, rising sea may be the least of our problems when it comes to the impact of greenhouse gas buildup in our atmosphere. The oceans naturally absorb CO2, but with CO2 levels increasing, the pH level of salt water drops. This change has the effect of dissolving the hard shells of calcifying organisms, such as crabs, shellfish and corals. The process has become known as ocean acidification. The, the terrestrial equivalent really is you know, the impacts that acid rain would have on um, some of the statues that you would see within, within Europe. You know, it's the same sort of thing. Through time, um, you know, this, this acid rain is affecting the, 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 the statues, and so you see them slowly erode. Over the geological era, without calcification, there would be no limestone and no chalk. The immediate impact is the already stressed coral polyps struggle to survive. And no polyps, no reefs. Corals won't be able to really make their skeletons. The trouble is, it's like um, you've then got the whole reef ecosystem just effectively disappearing because it's actually the structure of the corals, it's actually their skeletons which are providing the sea defence, you know, providing the sands which protect beaches. We are changing the global environment at such a rate, can coral reefs adapt to that rate of change? They've gone through massive changes in, in sea level rise, global temperatures through, through millions of years, but not at the rate at which we are changing the environment. The last word on nature, Inc. goes to the business leaders and decision makers who see a green route to profit. This week we hear from a leading entrepreneur and head of the Virgin Empire. We urgently need the governments to ratify a radical treaty which, you know, makes, uh, you know, companies like Virgin Atlantic and Airline pay for its use of the skies and, and then to use that money that they get from taxing uh, the dirty companies uh, in, in protecting the rainforest. And it's not only corals that are under threat from global warming, it's entire economies. In the next episode of Nature Inc, we go to Peru and Bolivia, countries on the front line of climate change, to see the damage caused to nature's services and ask who will pay the price.
Early learning is fundamental to a child's development, but what's the best way to unlock their potential? If you give the kids better stimulation in those early years, they will do better. Posing the questions this August on BBC World News. We'll have a look at the latest on Typhoon Morocot in just a second. But we'll start this forecast off on Sunday for Australia. One or two showers for Perth, staying rather cloudy along those southern coasts. Rain eventually working its way in towards Melbourne by the end of the day. For New Zealand, well, plenty of sunshine to the North Island, but further south, a bit more in the way of cloud. Now, on Sunday, Typhoon Morocot would have weakened to a tropical storm, now working its way into the Fujian province of China. Some heavy showers here, still some rather strong, gusty winds. Showers too for Hong Kong. Recent flooding in Papua New Guinea with those heavy showers. More heavy showers, I think, to forecast on Sunday.